welcome back in the EDL After Brexit show. My name is Camille Magnisali, and I'm pleased to welcome Dr. Aurélien Raka, expert in international and European law, to discuss today the dispute settlements. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, which courts have jurisdiction on the relation between the EU and the UK? That was one of the key points of Brexit. Uh, the UK didn't want to be uh, under the judgments of the Court of Justice of the European Union, which is the main court uh, of the European Union, which is settled in Luxembourg. So they wanted to be completely excluded from uh, the case law uh, because um, the case law of the court is uh, becoming, uh, through the time, very, um, I don't want to say ag aggressive, but is uh, more influential mm -hmm. and, uh, um, and concerning the 28 member states, um, decreasing the flexibility for uh, any interpretation from uh, the national courts. Yeah. So um, that was a key, one of the key points. And here again, we may say that there is a hard Brexit also on jurisdictions. And uh, there is a new dispute settlement mechanism that is uh, settled by uh, the, um, the, the, the TCA, so the Trade and Cooperation Agreement between the EU and the UK. And it is providing for the first time in the relations between the UK and the EU an arbitration uh, tribunal, arbitral tribunal, um, that is applying to the disputes between uh, the UK and the EU, but in very specific cases. Mm -hmm. And three arbitrators will be fixed and uh, um, it will concern the cases, mostly the relations between the investors and the states. Which means, and something a bit also new, um, not for international law, but for EU law, is that this uh, TCA has no direct effect. So the citizens and the, the usual conflict for companies, uh, they won't be concerned directly by this arbitral uh, tribunal, but that will be in very specific cases uh, for investors and states. Um, do you think that arbitration could be a danger for a fair justice? Arbitration is, uh, there are the two sides of the coin. Um, mm. There is the, let's start with the positive uh, side. And yeah. uh, of course, arbitration is, uh, is fast and is maybe more answering to the expectations from uh, the companies, the investors, mm. Uh, who wants uh, to be fast for their uh, financial interest and because of course one of the main critics that we may do to uh, the, the national justice in most of the states, not all but most of them, is that it's long, it's uh, not always uh, completely transparent and uh, the, the impartiality in, in some states is, is often erased. So, it may answer to some parties who want to be fast and uh, uh, effective. The negative side of the coin is that uh, we're losing the, the independence of, um, of the national system and we are going out of any traditional justice. Mm. And of course, one is losing a lot of, of um, of power, that is the Court of Justice of the European Union, and one of the fears that is that was already raised by the court in some cases, that one is called ACMIA in 2018, and one opinion of the uh, court in 2019 on this on the CETA, on the, the agreement between uh, the EU and Canada, uh, the court said it's fine to have arbitral tribunal, and it, it complies with the, uh, the, the, the EU system of justice, as long as the interpretation is still of the EU law is still in the hands of the Court of Justice of the European Union. So the Court of Justice of the EU keeps the exclusive competence to give interpretation on EU law, to make sure that we have an effective and unique uh, um, interpretation of EU law um, on the territory. Then on the specific competencies relating to the TCA, that will be the, the, the arbitral tribunals um, judging and, and solving the cases. So there are not many risks uh, regarding the interpretation of EU law? There, will, there, there are many risks because 
Uh, we don't know, we're, there is no, we're not used for the moment with yeah. those arbitral tribunals that are new uh, through the, the CETA, the, the other trade agreements because the, the, the European Union is signing uh, a, lo a lot of uh, trade agreements today. In the, 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 the last 10 years, the, um, the, the EU has signed many agreements uh, with uh, third countries, mm -hmm. and most of them, they are providing arbitral tribunals to solve the cases, uh, the conflict. Uh, so we don't have a lot of experience for the moment in the EU. The fear is that on some issues, the trade, um, ex yeah, exchange of goods, services, and uh, uh, free movement of people, or no, people will won't apply. There is not a good example. So for goods, uh, services, uh, investment, um, and other pol pol policy areas, in case of conflict, the arbitral tribunal will use the EU law and will apply the EU law in its own case law. And in the way they will use it, they may interpret. Because yeah. any implementation of the law is a kind of interpretation. Mm. So they may, in the way they will apply it, they may give a, a, a specific interpretation. The court is saying in the cases I just mentioned before, we keep the, the, the extra competence and uh, uh, the arbitral tribunals, they are not considered as um, national jurisdictions. And so they're in a the corner for the moment. They're in a the corner. They will solve only the, the, the conflict in the, the context of the TCA. The fear is that if those arbitra uh, uh, arbitral tribunals take more importance through the time, if they cover more fields, more relations, yes, at that time that could be a fear. And here maybe some, one point, last point that I did not mention, is that um, arbitration is costly. Mm. And uh, one of the fears is that this justice can be only accessible to those who have uh, money. enough money, money yeah. and uh, that may exclude the small companies and of course but it, they're not concerned uh, because the citizens the consumers they will still go to the national courts but we could have a double system uh, system is arbitration for the the rich and the, the, the national courts the usual courts uh, uh, that are longer with the long process uh, to to those who don't have enough money so that is the fear so we need to wait and to see how is it going. Um, Dr. Henrika, uh, it was the last episode of this EUD after Brexit show, show organized by the Catholic University and managed by you as the, the responsible of the Master in International and European Law. Uh, could we have your feelings? Um, I think it's, show. it's a very nice uh, project to, I'm not objective of course, but uh, <laughs> Yes, um, you are, you are. The, the, the students during the first semester, they wrote uh, papers, so they, they were studying the content, the substance of the policies and the, the evolution of the case law, um, or the evolution of the, so after Brexit of, on the basis of the TCA. Mm. So there was a substance at the beginning and now they are expressing here on the TV show, uh, they're the result of their research. For the first time. For the first time, and uh, I think it's a great exercise, and we have the, the very the, the chance to have this uh, uh, structure here, and with yeah. very, very good professionals, and I, I really want to greet the, the Media Lab here, that is doing a very great job. Yeah. Uh, that is a great opportunity for the, the, the students and, and, and professors that are working here to have it so nice uh, TV show. And uh, yeah, and then there is also a way to, to show to, all, to the next generations how good you were and when you will, we become, <laughs> when you will become older, uh, you will be happy to see uh, that you, you, you had a great, great, memory. A great time uh, at the Catholic University of Lille. Yeah, the best university. <laughs> Thank you for uh, being here. That Thank was you. a real yeah. pleasure. Thank you. Uh, it's the end of this EU deal after Brexit show. I hope that you enjoyed from home our episodes. Do not hesitate to find all the episodes on our channel. Thank you for following us.